The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink TV, its sponsors, or partners. This is the best time of the year. I mean, no thermal underwear, no cleaning off the car at minus 40, and I mean, getting more than four hours of daylight so you don't feel like a vampire. You get t-shirts, shorts, bikinis, socks, and sandals, just not together, and I'm all in for this. But what I really love to do during this season is sample what Northern Ontario has to offer. I'm Chris Mask, and I love food. I mean, cooking's my passion, it's in my blood. And you might ask, what does Northern Ontario have to offer exactly? These transforming these little dirt nuggets into crispy golden works of art and it's my job to try them all. When you're coming through Sturgeon Falls, I mean, this is known as like a chip stand mecca. Yeah. Larry's, I think you guys, you've been around since 53, you said? Yeah, 1953, yeah. Your family has owned this chip stand, Roger, for 68 years. That's gotta be one of the longest operational chip stands. Yeah, well, I'm not sure if it's the longest, but it is, yeah, it's uh, been running for a long time. What were the grassroots of this? Uh, well, my grandfather started this in 1953. Uh, where he got the idea, I'm not too sure, but uh, whatever, wherever he got the idea from, it was a good idea because uh, it's been going strong and uh, still going. So. And you said that your dad used to actually carry buckets of potatoes on his bike. Yeah, yeah. When uh, he worked for my grandpa, he used to pay him ten cents for a five-gallon pail. Every five-gallon pail was ten cents, and he used to haul them from home to here on his pedal bike, one five-gallon at a time. I'm assuming you make more than that for yourself. A right little now? bit, yeah. I think we just went up a little bit since then. One of the unique things is that uh, being in Sturgeon Falls here, uh, you are in direct competition, right across the street with the other place. Yes, yes, that we are. But you know what? It's it's not a bad thing. It's it's good because. Uh, if we didn't have competition, I mean, it'd be hard to keep up with the, with, with the, the customers and uh, it would be pretty overwhelming. What would be the best piece of sage advice you'd give to somebody who's looking to start a chip stand? Well, if you're looking to start a chip stand, you get yourself mentally prepared for the long hours, the hard work, because these places don't run themselves. People, people think, you know, they're little gold mines, but you got to put the hours in. I mean, they don't run themselves, that's for sure. What's been the toughest thing that you've found that uh causes you grief and stress at night? Uh, the hardest thing I find is uh, because it's seasonal, it, it's hard to get repetitive staff, like people that come back the next year because they find jobs in the winter time and it's every, every spring it's a struggle to get good staff back in here and get them trained up and ready for the summer. Now you have a pretty simple menu, but you also have a unique menu. So let's get inside the kitchen and see what you got for us today. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Okay, so something that uh, we're going to do before we actually get inside the kitchen is uh, we found Heather here. Now, Heather, how long exactly have you been coming to this chip stand here? Since it opened. And we talk about since it opened, Larry's was established in? 1953. So, number one, it blows my mind that you've, you've been coming this long because, I mean, you look like you're in your 20s. Is that a lot of oil of olay? Possibly? <laughs> no. no, it's it's another kind. <laughs> okay, uh, virgin tears and I understand. Okay, so what are your memories then of this chip stand? I mean, this must be great to hear stories of your grandfather. Oh, I love hearing stories. Well, as I say, we, it started and of course I moved away. I went away to school, university, came back, taught here for three, four years. And now I come back every summer because my sister and I, who's from Ottawa, has a summer have a summer place half an hour from here. Our first stop is always Larry's. Uh, we come in, anytime we come into Sturgeon again, we, we stop at Larry's and none of my children better go across the road or they're disowned. <laughs> you they hear that <laughs> inheritance uh, on the line for this. Good. What's your favorite thing on the menu? I love their fries and I love their hamburgers. Okay, so inside the kitchen at Larry's, and uh, Roger, I mean, I can feel the heat coming off of this. You're talking hot fryers here. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. Is that your key to making a good French fry then? It is, the uh, temperature of your fries, the size of your batches. Um, there are different factors of making a good golden crispy fry and the potato, of course. 
And the potato. Where do you get your potatoes from? Uh, we get our potatoes from Don Poulet. Don Poulet? Yeah. Another Don Poulet quality potato. That's right. We do like our Don Poulet. <laughs> Valley Growers, I mean, honestly, it's great because then it does support a local network here. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So what's your big seller in the kitchen? Uh, our big sellers, well, our main sellers would be our pogos and our potatoes. Uh, we have our new product that we started this year, our deep fried curds. They've been a really good seller as far uh, so far as well. Um, as far as I know, nobody else is doing deep fried curds, so I'm excited to try those. No, as far as I know, nobody is. And our Italian pogo as well. That's something new we started this year. As far as I know, nobody else is doing it. So, so far they've been selling pretty good. So many years in the business, you could easily be the oldest chip stand that's still operational in Ontario and possibly even Canada. There's got to be a couple misses on the menu. Uh, well, I know uh, at one time they had tried salads and that didn't work out too well. I mean, were, no, it's a deep fried place, right? Who wants salad? You're here for the greasy deep stuff. Fry the salad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, something you could try, I guess. I don't know if it turned out too good. Probably not. <laughs> what are you going to make for us today? Uh, today I'm going to make you some deep fried curds and an Italian pogo. Excellent. Now you do your own hand dipping on the pogo? Yes, we do. Awesome. So what's the secret to that then? Uh, well, the batter, of course, I can't tell you that. Well, you can't tell me that. Probably a hand technique to <laughs> yeah, put the little... Yeah. To make it nice, yeah. To make it nice, yeah. All right, well, let's see you get into that. And, All right. Uh, we'll go from there. All right, so... So with these fryers throwing off all this heat, are there some things that you maybe would like to try and expand to and uh, possibly add to your menu? I mean, going the, the Italian poutine and the Italian hot dog route, that's, that's outside the box, so to speak. Yeah. Do you just sit around and say, you know what, maybe we should try this. Maybe we should try like a, uh, a deep fried pulled pork ball or... Uh, well, we, we think of things, like we, we talk about different things we, we want to try. We've got something we've thought of. I don't really want to let our little secret out just yet, but we've discussed something recently that we're going to try on the side of the dessert, deep fried desserts. Really? Yeah. So uh, I don't want to give it away just yet until we uh, actually bring it out on the menu. But yeah, we do, uh, we do talk about new things to try to put on the menu. Can you whisper it in my ear? <laughs> You're kidding me. Yeah, yeah. I can't say what he just said, but I will say that uh, it does sound glorious, ah. shall we say. So whether it comes out this year or not, we're not sure yet. Like I said, it's in the works, so we'll see, uh, we'll see where it goes. I would be all over that, and I'm sure cardiologists everywhere would be all over that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where do you get your inspiration for new dishes? Uh, we just, amongst ourselves, I guess, with the owners, we discuss things that, uh, you know, be successful with the business, and uh, we just try to come up with ideas. And we also have our supplier, uh, 1117, Mark Dumont in uh, North Bay. He uh, gives us ideas when he has new products, he brings them in, and uh, we try them out, see if they work, see if they don't. I guess one of the biggest feedbacks you'd get would be from your clientele being in business for as long as you are. Yeah, yeah. Is that your gauge then to determine whether or not something is in your yeah, mind? Yeah, it's exactly what it is, yeah. yeah. So if, that, if the customers uh, request it, then yeah, we, if we don't sell it, then we don't, we don't continue on with it. Have you ever considered something like maybe a breakfast poutine? No, because we're not open for breakfast. Late night <laughs> hangover poutine yeah, possibly? I mean, well, that's any regular poutine's good hangover food. That's true. <laughs> that is very true. What is your staple go-to on the menu for yourself when you got a grumble in your tummy? Myself, just your regular traditional pogo. Just a regular traditional pogo? Oh yeah, our traditional pogo. With that secret batter you won't tell us about. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, when you make your poutine though, are you on the curd side of things or are you the blend or are you good with shredded? I go with the mix. I go with the curds and the shred. See, it's my belief you get the best of both worlds like that, That's right. right. You get yeah. the diehards who say, oh no, it's got to be curds yeah, and then yeah. it's got to be squeaky curds. Yeah, yeah. No, I like I to like mix it up. the best of both worlds. Because you get that creaminess from the melted shredded cheese. That's right, yeah. And then you get that nice bite from that, yeah. too. And uh, when you deep fry your curds, what kind of curds are you using? Uh, they're they're just a battered curd. Just I don't, a battered curd? Yeah, just a battered curd. A generic battered curd. Yeah. yeah. Is it made with love, though? Oh, of course. And that's Always. what sets it apart from everything that's else That's right. There. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into the pogo and the deep fried curds and uh, give it a shot here in the kitchen at Larry's. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. All right, Roger, Larry's chip stand here in Sturgeon Falls. We're in the kitchen. We've got the Italian pogo. Yeah. So what makes this an Italian pogo? Spicy wiener. 
Spicy wiener. That's right. Okay, I figured they'd be doused in marinara sauce with like mozzarella cheese, but I mean, this is good. We've got something else that's very different. Yeah, the deep fried curds. The deep fried curds with a little side of ranch. Yeah. You can also get the marinara with that's this. That's right, yeah. And then you've got your chips, which I mean, this is your bread and butter here. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, it's nice for the kids too, because you got the little cone fries. Yes, we do, yeah. So I think that's always neat. And in terms of poutine, it's a pretty good variety there. Steak, chicken, yeah. hamburger, bacon. What has to be the strangest request you've had for a poutine? Uh, strangest request for a poutine? I would say barbecue sauce mixed in with the gravy. Really? Yeah. How about people wanting a pogo like this cut up and Actually, up on we've top? had one request uh, not too long ago. Somebody wanted a pogo cut up in their poutine. That's right. Yeah. Your fries, I mean, that's just such a beautiful color. And again, you go with such a high heat with it. Nice crispiness. I mean, that's, that's a gorgeous cook. Great fries, really nice crunch to them. These curds, we've had a chance to let them cool down so they're not gonna totally singe me, but I mean, you can still see the heat coming off yeah. them. Are these made with these squeaky curds? Of course. Mm. They are squeaky curds because I have to do the extra chewing. <laughs> I could eat a bucket of those. I'd probably die. Yeah but I could eat a bucket of them. And now the Italian pogo, a little bit of mustard on there because that's how you eat your pogos. That's right. Are yeah. you a mustard or ketchup guy on your pogo? I'm a mustard kind of guy. Good, that's yeah. the way it should be, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. People who put ketchup on pogos? I don't know, my little guy does that and I don't agree with it. <laughs> the Italian style wiener? Fantastic pogo, yeah. fantastic. I would actually ask for a side of marinara sauce with this, yeah. but that breading you do on it, it's not greasy, it's crispy, it's really light. I mean, this is gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful job on this pogo. I mean, but you think you know what you're doing because you've been around for 60 plus years, right? Well, that's right, I mean. This could very well be the oldest chip stand in Ontario and Larry's in Sturgeon Falls. They know what they're doing. This is a place you gotta come and try, I'm telling you. Fantastic food guys. Awesome. Great, eat this more. In many towns and cities, when you're hunting for a chip stand, sometimes you have to travel great distances. But here in Sturgeon Falls, you just gotta travel across the street. Okay, so here we are, Sturgeon Falls, in a very unique place. We're at the Riv Chip Stand with Kate. Now, 44 years in business, but this is your first year taking it over from the original owners. Yes. That's quite a challenge. Yes, yes. Are you up to that? Oh yeah, oh, we're excited about it. So what made you decide one day to wake up and say, you know what, darn it, I wanna buy myself a chip stand. <laughs> Well, my husband's family is from Sturgeon Falls, so when we moved uh, with our children here to be closer to his family, we wanted to open a restaurant, and uh, when we heard that the owners of the Riv might be interested in retirement, we approached them, and uh, it was just the perfect opportunity. Now, you have some really big shoes to fill, but you've got an extensive culinary resume. I mean, this is impressive. Yes, definitely. Uh, it's, it's big shoes to fill and Carol and Norm did such a great job. They were here for 22 years. So uh, we're looking to continue on with the, the great service that they provided before us. And you're drawing on a background where you were trained in New York. You spent time working in kitchens in New Orleans, in Montreal, and now you're here. What do you want to bring to this community? Well, it's to be a part of the community and, you know, to, to be a part of Sturgeon Falls and this is such a legacy restaurant. So we definitely want to bring uh, maybe some more from scratch products, but uh, we definitely just want to kind of continue with the, with the success that has already been established here. What have you found to be the biggest challenge so far? Really is to, to find a routine and to just, um, just to find, you know, get to know our regular customers and, and to be able to service them uh, efficiently. All right, well, let's get back into the kitchen and let's see what wonderful thing you make for us today. Sound Great. good? Awesome. Thanks. 
Okay, so here we are, Kate, in the kitchen of the Riv, your new labor of love, yes. if you will. <laughs> now, one thing that uh, you were mentioning is how uh, you're really proud to be part of the community. Are you expecting then, with your culinary background, try and branch out and maybe try and embrace some of that French culture by adding possibly tortillere or maybe a sugar pie dessert possibly to the menu? We'll definitely look at some different desserts, uh, maybe in the next season. But uh, we like to we like to offer be sure and offer French service as well as English service at the counter always. And again, you're coming from uh, an establishment that's been around for 44 years. This is your first run. Like you said, you don't really want to rock the boat too much. Right. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Whose idea was it to come up with a ketchup package like this? This is this is monstrous. It's genius. Like, look at the size of this thing. Like, that's huge. Well, you haven't seen the size of our fries yet, have you? That's very <laughs> true. You've got a pretty good list for your uh, poutines as well. What is your big seller? Uh, we have a few signature poutines that are very popular. Uh, one thing is people like to make their poutine Italian style. So. Um, Carol, who was here before me, her mother had a great recipe for an Italian sauce. And I was lucky enough to get that recipe. So we continue it on, and a lot of people like to make their poutine Italian style with the what sauce was on top. Asking? Gervais. And you, you can hear the Italian roll off, oh, yes. off the tongue of that deep roots with, with a name like Gervais. But it's a good sauce. I'm sure it is. And uh, you also do all your pogos hand dipped on your own? Of course, yes. We were talking about how sometimes you get some really weird requests at chip stands, and you were telling one about a pogo. Yeah, some people really love the batter, and they some people ask for extra batter, but sometimes they want even more extra batter where it's cooked, re-dipped, and cooked again. So then you get, I guess, triple batter. So it's all about the batter. That sounds like, I thought it was all about the base, according to Megan Trainer, but apparently, according Not to Kate, here. it's all about the batter. <laughs> yes. There you go. What has to be uh, your favorite dish for yourself here in the kitchen? You know, I really like the wraps. I know it sounds not very chip stand, but they're, you know, we can make lots of different unique wraps and it's kind of like another option because of course you love pogos, you love poutine, but when you work here every day, it's nice to have something different uh, on the menu as well. See, I'd be hitting the ice cream maker all day. Oh yeah, yeah. We do have lots of good ice cream. I do like my ice cream. And I like to mix different candies in my ice cream, and uh, milkshakes are a big popular one here, too. Your milkshake brings all the boys to the yard? Well, they bring a lot of people to the counter, that's for sure. It brings me to the <laughs> counter, too, if you couldn't tell by my Savelle figure. So where do you want to take this, then? Where's the next step? You know, we just want to continue the, you know, the path that it's been pushed forward, and you know, we would like to try and maybe incorporate some different, uh, more from scratch recipes, and maybe kind of add some things to the menu for next season. And uh, but for right now, we're just trying to, trying to stay afloat. <laughs> trying to stay afloat. I mean, you're only two months in on the project. Exactly. Right now. So this obviously has to be something that you really love, and I mean, food. You're incredibly passionate about. Yes. You got a background as a pastry chef as well. You hoping to encounter possibly incorporate some of that into the mix? Yeah, we definitely want to add some fun desserts here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna look into that for next season, but uh, but yeah, we definitely want to kind of keep things going as they are for right now. And uh, what was the best piece of advice the previous owners gave you? Did they well, give you any advice or just say here are the keys <laughs> and take off? No, we spent we spent a lot of time together and they gave me lots of great advice. I would say obviously the most important one was how to make the pogo batter. So unfortunately I can't share that with you. Well you can't tell me. I would but say you can show that me. was the most important. Piece. You've got it's like Santa's workshop here and there's elves everywhere and there was a couple dipping pogos over there earlier. Yes. yes. So what then can you give us a hint to you to anything in the batter other than flour? Yes, you're right, there's flour in it. I got uh, an ingredient right. <laughs> But it's it's really all about the, the viscosity of it, the, the density of it. So it has to be the right consistency. As the uh, pogo maker, how do you know when the pogo is done? How do I know when it's done? Yeah. Um, when it's golden. The color. Yeah, the color. Do you time it, sing a little song in your head? I mean, sometimes when it's not busy and I have time. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to time anything. Honestly, I poach my eggs and uh, I sing Amazing Grace in my head. You do that three times, perfect poached egg every time. There's a little food fact for you, take that. <laughs> How about you, what's your favorite dish in here? My favorite dish would be uh, a poutine, for sure, and a pogo with mustard. That would be your favorite dish.
All right, well, let's get into a couple of your signature poutines then and uh, try what the rib is all about. Okay, would you like to start with a pogo? A ho, can you make a pogo? That's a loaded question. <laughs> So I think to call this a pair of masterpieces is an understatement. Kate, this is this is amazing what you've made here in the kitchen at the Riv. These are your two signature poutines. These are two of our two of our signatures. Yes, there's others, but these are these are two more popular ones. And when you use your cheese curds for this, if I go and use my dirty little hands to pull this out, they're the squeaky curds. Yes. So they're Saint Albert. Saint Albert. One thing that I do want to point out. I don't know if anybody can get a picture of this, but you've basically got a bucket of cheese curds over here that was like a pillow <laughs> in terms of fullness when we started this. And it's just about empty to show you the volume that goes through here. Yes, we go through a lot of cheese curds, that's for sure. Your kitchen staff, like these little elves in Santa's workshop, have been constantly moving. Yeah, I mean, it's a busy place. That is incredible. I know that you've got a lot of specialty poutines like this, but we were also talking about how you wanted to try and branch out and try some daily specials, not to reinvent the wheel, but just offer something different. Like for example, tomorrow Bannock you were considering on the menu. Yeah, we were thinking of, we are definitely looking to introduce some different kind of daily specials. And uh, one of the things we wanted to do is maybe for tomorrow for Aboriginal Day is to offer Bannock as a special. And uh, also on Friday, we always offer fish, but maybe we'll try and offer a different fish. We have some little cod bites coming up for this Friday. So yeah, we're gonna try and mix up the specials and do some, some new, new items there. All right, well, I'm gonna dig into this this uh, great Canadian poutine, you had me at back bacon and then made me incredibly happy by actually putting normal bacon in here too and I'm, I'm for clam. <laughs> she put like 12 pumps of gravy into this, like this is, this is literally a That's, monster. It's got to be all the way to the bottom. I can't even find french fries in here, there's so many toppings. So this is your big seller? Yeah, it's, it's a popular one. I mean with all that bacon, how could it not be popular, right? Oh, exactly. making a mess of myself but it's the saltiness of the bacon and the richness of the gravy and the creaminess of the cheese this this is a work of art it's a beautiful beautiful poutine and we always talk about how the fries are made you got a nice golden color on them are you a blancher first or are you a right into the fryer no they're they're fried from and where from your potatoes come from that's a secret <laughs> okay that's a secret they are local they are definitely uh, from, from nearby. It's a very flavorful sauce. I can see why that recipe has been around for 40 some years. Exactly. You know what, Kate? This is a great job. Thank I wish you. you the best of luck. I mean, you got big shoes to fill, but obviously it's in very good hands. Yes, it's a uh... chip stand here in Sturgeon Falls. You got to come and try this place and Kitchen Elves. Good job, Kitchen Elves. Good cool. job. Thank you. Can I get a hug? Sure. <laughs> Don't tell your husband. Awesome. Hope you got your fill from this episode, but don't worry, we'll be back on the wagon and hitting the dusty trails soon enough. Until next time, I'm Chris Mask. Thanks for watching. Where's this been all my life?